Is anybody like that here? Yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me hear you say it loud and clear. <laughs> That every one of you from now on you will begin to excel. Amen. Who is the one fellow that you will stand beside him or her? Say, you are the one who will get my attention. allows you to enter into overflowing blessings. Redemption Way. The Lord is going to surprise someone here tonight. Join Pastor E.A. Adeboye and other men of God every first Friday of the month as they lead multitudes of worshippers to the presence of God in the monthly Holy Ghost service at the Redemption Camp, kilometer 46 Lagos Ibada Expressway from 6.30 p.m. to dawn. Welcome you specially to the Open Heavens International Center. I tell you that I had several encounters with God in that house. Let somebody shout The anointing in that house is uh, awesome. There is a redeemed Christian Church of God very close to you. Join them for a life-changing experience in worship. You're watching Redemption Way.
He's the bright of the morning stars, the ancient of days, lily of the valley. At the dawn of the morning, that new vanity I am sire. A mini tinker, a mini, a mini marshmallow.
past not only last year but in the past 12 years since we've been gathering like this to thank you thank you for life thank you for health thank you for strength thank you that today we are not in an asylum thank you that today we are not in prison Father, we know not all those who are in prison are guilty. There are some innocent people who are there. That we are still out here, free, is only because of your mercy. And Lord, we thank you for joining mercies. How many people have left home in the morning and didn't return? Not because they were careless drivers, but because something happened that shouldn't have happened. Thank you for sleeping. Thank you for waking up. Thank you for food to eat. Thank you for the appetite to eat. Thank you for clothes to wear. Thank you, Lord, that our bodies have not refused clothes. Thank you that this morning when we woke up, we went to the toilet on our own. Thank you that this morning we clothed ourselves. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for peace in our time. Thank you for Nigeria. Thank you because many of the things happening in Nigeria, if only 10% of it should happen in another country, the country will be no more. Thank you for loving Nigeria. And Lord God Almighty, thank you for Lagos State. Oh Lord, thank you for Lagos State. Thank you for progress. Thank you for everything you have done. Thank you for our governor. Thank you for his family. Thank you for all our spiritual fathers who are here today. Thank you for our traditional rulers. Thank you for all the elder statesmen who are here gathered. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, we are praying that everyone here today will receive a special touch from you. That this year will be a year of laughter for all of us. That it will be a year of joy for all of us. Father, I pray that every prayer that we pray here today, you will answer by fire. And that everyone here today will go home with at least a testimony in Jesus' name. And at the end of everything, Lord, let your name be glorified again. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Today, my message might be slightly different from what it used to be. And we'll probably discover why in a moment. Um... If you, if you have your Bibles here, if you just open your Bibles, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. Uh, it, it says something very simple, something that I'm sure you all know very well. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. It says, The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he added no sorrow with it. Turn to somebody on your right or on your left and say, God is going to prosper me this year. And there will be no sorrow added. Uh, say it if, if, as if you really mean it.
Someone said that the world is a university. And that those who are wise go to school every day. Because there's always something you can learn every day of your life. And you can learn even from your children. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 9, Proverbs 9, verse 9, it said, If you give instructions to a wise man, he will yet be wiser. So if you are already wise, you might gain just a little bit from what your little boy is about to share. One of my sons was preaching not too long ago, and he said something that helped me to reach certain conclusions. He was talking about the difference between favor and labor. He said, when he was given uh, an example, he said, when Jacob wanted a wife, he labored for 14 years before he got the woman that he wanted to marry. He said, but when Isaac wanted a wife, he went for his stroll and came back with a wife. He said, one had favor, the other had labor. The moment he said that, I made up my mind that this year, I'm going to settle for favor. I don't know about you. This led me to making what you probably call New Year resolutions. And so I'm going to share with you my own New Year resolutions. Maybe you might find one out of the numerous ones that I have that you want to include with your own, that is if you haven't made one, or if you have made many. And if you haven't made one, maybe you just pick one of my own and make it your own New Year resolution also. Because I am determined this year to succeed without a sweat. And I believe there might be one or two people who would like to be like me. I am going to seek divine favor. And I have discovered that there are certain ways I can go about it and get what I want. And I'm going to share a little bit of it with you and then let you decide what you want also. Number one, I'm going to be grateful to God this year than ever before. I'm going to worship him like I've never done before. Because I've discovered that the Bible says that even when you are praying, you are not sure because God is unseen, you are not sure whether God is near or God is far. And the Bible enjoins us in Isaiah 55 verse 6, Isaiah 55 verse 6, he said, you are to seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. The question is, how do I know when he's near? But I have also discovered that the Bible says in John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24, John 3, John 4, verses 23 and 24, that God is a spirit. They that worship him in spirit and in truth, uh, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. In other words, if instead of me seeking God while he may be found, and I'm not too sure while he may be found, if I worship him in spirit and in truth, he will be the one who will seek me out. Instead of me looking for him, not knowing whether he's near or far, if I just concentrate on worshiping him, praising him, he will draw near to me. So this year, like never before, I'm going to praise God. I'm going to do it with all my heart. I'm going to do it with my spirit. I'm going to do it with all my strength. 
And like I shared with some of my children uh, on the New Year Eve, I said, there are several things you can do quietly. You can meditate in the Word of God quietly. You can study the Bible quietly. You can even pray quietly. After all, God is not deaf. But there is no way you can praise God quietly. Nobody can say thank you with his mouth closed. So this year, like never before, I'm going to praise God with all my strength. And there might be one or two people here who would love to join me. And I'm going to ask such people to shout a really big hallelujah to God. And like I, I don't know if I've shared it here before, but I've shared it with some of my children before, that whenever you worship somebody, whenever you eulogize someone, whenever you praise someone from the bottom of your heart, you get that fellow himself to even volunteer to help. And I need God to volunteer to help me this year. I've told the story before that's, that my father was uh, so poor that the poor people called him poor. Among the poor people in our village, he was regarded as poor. And in those days, my father died in 1960, so you know, remember those years. In my village in those days, there were only five people you could call rich. You could call them rich because they had story buildings. And the story buildings has for their ceiling wooden planks. So that when the owner wakes up, everybody downstairs must wake up too. Those were the rich ones. So you will know the average fellow then. Those average people looked down at my father and called him poor. But in spite of that, he still had two wives. <laughs> and ten children. And so when it is time for school fees to be paid, he will pick a quarrel with the wives so that they won't be able to come and ask for school fees. But my mother always got my school fees. How, how did she do it? Well, I happened to be the last son of my dad, so I always slept by his side on his mat. Whenever it is Friday before the Monday, my mother will come to my father and begin to praise him. Oh, I've come to greet my owner today. The owner of my head, the owner of my chest, the husband of this, the husband of that. You are the son of so and so, you are the son of so and so. When your father went to war, he captured so many. He killed so many. When your father threw a party, he fed the city, he fed the army. And on and on. And suddenly you hear my father begin to say, that is true. That is correct. It is a man you are calling. And my, <laughs> and my mother will keep on pumping him and he will keep on swelling. You could practically feel him swelling. The bird flew over your father's farm and never saw the end of it. I used to wonder, where is that farm? <laughs> but by the time my mother finishes, it is my dad who will ask her, and what can I do for you today? And my mother, my mother will say, <laughs> we all know that things are hard, uh, so, but... You know, your, your son is about to... My father would say, don't mention it. If I don't have the money, I will go and get it somewhere. This year, I'm going to worship God. I'm going to call him the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. The I am that I am, the Ancient of Days, the Holy One of Israel, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. I'm going to call him the bright and morning star. I'm going to tell him that with him all things are possible. I'm going to tell him that he can cure the incurable. I'm going to tell him that it's the resurrection and the life. I'm going to tell him that the world is his and the fullness thereof. 
I'm going to tell him that silver belongs to him, gold belongs to him. I'm going to tell him that when he has the sea to part, the sea will part. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to worship him this year. And I know he will draw near me. Do I hear someone again shout hallelujah? That's my resolution number one. My resolution number two is that this year I'm going to open my mouth. I'm not going to keep quiet. I'm going to tell God exactly how things are with me. You see, I've discovered from experience that occasionally we've become so well versed in pretending that all is well when all is not well. That we have even taken it to the extent that we pretend before God. The one who knows all things. You know, there's a story in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 19 to 22. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 19 to 22. It says that the men of Jericho came to Elisha and said, Sir, our city is looking beautiful, but we have problems. The water is not, there is blindness, there is death. And the man of God said, all right, we'll solve that problem. Let's do this, let's do this, and the problem was solved. But what you need to note here is this. For years, Elijah, the father of Elisha, was walking up and down among the people of Jericho, and they did not open their mouths. They kept on telling everybody, see how beautiful our city is. Can't you see how beautiful? Our city is a city of palm trees. We have trees. We have these. We have that. And they were dying. This year, I'm not going to keep quiet. I'm going to tell the Almighty God where my problems are. I'm going to tell him in details. I'm not going to hide anything from God this year. And there might be one or two people like that here too. And I've always told this story. Some years ago, I went to visit an uncle of mine. I was a young man, and when I was young, I could eat. I'm sure you must have discovered that by now. And I was going to spend a week with them. And the wife is a warm, proper, unibu lady. So it was time to eat. And she gave me pounded yam about the size of my fist. Now, if I were going to stay for one day, I would have kept my mouth shut. But I was going to stay for one week. And Pandadiam, the size of my fist, would not go far. So I called the woman. I said, excuse me, ma, am I welcome here? And she said, yes, of course you are. Are you sure? She said, yes. I said, in that case, go and bring me more Pandadiam. She went into the bedroom. I didn't know what she told her husband, but I heard the two of them laughing. I couldn't care less. She came back and gave me more pandemia. And that is what is important to me. This year, I am not going to keep quiet. I'm going to tell God exactly where the shoe hurts. Is there anybody here today who is going to lift up his or her voice and say, God, help me? Mm. I'm not going to pretend. I'm going to ask God for help when I need help. I'm going to pray like I've never prayed before. I'm going to tell him in details, this is what I need. My third year resolution is that I'm going to humble myself more than ever before. Because I've discovered that pride can rob you of many help. Because many a times the one who can help you is quote and unquote inferior to you. Going to somebody who is superior to you for help seems to be easy. But occasionally you need someone or there is someone who has the ability to help you but yet is inferior to you. This year I'm going to humble myself and anyone who can help me I'm going to ask them for help. It will not be considered uh, 
Humility, if I go to a bishop to help me, I'm an ordinary pastor. But if I see a deacon or a member of the choir, whether it is the beautiful choir from Desta or from the wonderful choir from the Redeemed Christian Church, I will say, sir, I need help. You see, because the moment the help is given, my problem is solved. If you like, you can go and tell everybody you are the one who helped me. That's no, <laughs> it doesn't matter anymore. All I need is I want my problem solved. Anybody like that here today again? Let me hear you say amen. Then. Because um, as I was thinking along this thing, I remembered something that happened years ago. I was in the secondary school in those days when we were still under the colonial masters. And the elders here will remember those days. The rule then is, it doesn't matter how brilliant you are, if you fail in English language, you are failed all. How many of you remember those days? Uh -huh. only, only those who are probably 70 and over. <laughs> I was good in mathematics, I was good in science, I was good in this, but my English, ah. And I saw the way things were going. <laughs> English was going to fail me. And then there was this young boy who was my junior, and in those days, <laughs> a junior in the secondary school cannot even come to the classroom of the senior uninvited. There was discipline in those days. But this boy was born in England. He spoke Queen's English. And I need English. So I called him aside. I said, you are my junior, you know. He said, yes, sir. Hmm. I want you to help me. I must pass English. If you tell anyone you are the one who taught me, you'll be in trouble. Anytime I have money, I will buy you granite. He taught me English. I came out with A. Now, it doesn't matter. He can come now and say, but I'm the one who taught you English. It doesn't matter. I already got my school set. How many of you want help now from any angle whatsoever? Let me hear you say amen. amen. Made up my mind number four this year. I'm going to give more. And I'm going to give cheerfully. I want to remember the fact that I'm a farmer's boy. And I have noticed that every year at a particular time of the year, my father would take the best yam, set it aside, the best maize, set it aside, the best this, the best that, and, say, and we wonder what's this for? And he would tell us for planting. And I have discovered that without fail, it is what we plant this year that we are going to eat next year. And the word of God says that God loves a cheerful giver. Second Corinthians chapter 9, from verse uh, 6 to 7. He said that if you sow sparingly, you will reap sparingly. You sow bountifully, you will reap bountifully. He said, but don't give grudgingly, give cheerfully, because God loves a cheerful giver. And I need his help. I need his favor. This year, like never before, I'm going to give. Because I know when I give, there will be a harvest. How many of you are expecting some harvest this year? Ah, I think you better make up your mind that like me too, you will give. I remember an instance. We were just beginning to build the redemption camp. And uh, <laughs> things were hard in those days. We've just got the first auditorium ready. It was, in those days, we are still using feet. It was 300 feet long, 150 feet wide. 
and we want to cover it with corrugated iron sheets. And in those days, Naira was powerful. God will restore Naira to his glory. To roof that giant, and it was a giant to me then, I needed 70,000 Naira. <laughs> That's like uh, saying 17 million now. And I had only 1,000 Naira. And I was praying, God, where will this remaining 16,000 come from? When one of my pastors came in, he was given an assignment to build a little shed for those who are in his parish to come and stay during the convention. And he needed a thousand naira to roof his own shed. And he came to me and said, Daddy, please help me. I said, help you how? Please give me a thousand naira. I looked at him and I was angry. I need 17,000. I have only one. I'm looking to God for an additional 16. Who told you anyway that I have one? You want to come and take the one so I can go back to zero? I told him, I said, if you don't get out of my office. He saw the way I spoke and he began to run. But as he was running away, God spoke to me. I said, call him back and give him that 1,000. If I didn't know the voice of God, I would have said, get thee behind me, Satan. But I knew who was talking. So I called him back. God said, give him. So I gave him. Well, if you say give him, let him have it. I don't know where my own will come from. The boy got the 1,000 naira and he began to gallop away in joy. I looked at him. I said, it's not your fault. It's God who has solved your problem. And God spoke to me, and I, I know God will speak to someone here tonight. I said, son, why are you grumbling? There are two problems. I've used you to solve one. It remains only one. The one you cannot solve, leave it to me. I pray for someone here today. Every problem in your life that you cannot solve, God will solve it for you this year. Brethren, it was some hours later when someone came all the way from Port Harcourt and said, Sir, I have just collected my house rent. And the Almighty God said to me, Take it to my son. Don't deduct from it. And he said, I just have to obey God. He gave me the envelope, I blessed him. When I opened the envelope, it was 17,000 Naira. Exactly. Now, those were the days when Naira was Naira. Today, <laughs> my knees are not thousands. <laughs> my knees are not even millions. But there is still a God in the heavens. And the law of harvest is still sure. This year, like never before, I am going to sow. Is there anybody else who will join me along that line? Expect a harvest in Jesus' name. My resolution number five. This year, like never before, I'm going to trust man less and trust God more. I'm going to trust man less and God more. Why? Because to start with, God said, vain is the help of man. Man will disappoint you, but God will not. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5 to 8, Jeremiah 17, verse 5 to 8, he said, cause is the man who puts his trust in man, who makes the arm of flesh his trust. God says, you put your trust in man, you are putting a cross on yourself. He said, but blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. He said, that fellow will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. It doesn't matter what is happening. He said, that tree will just remain forever green. I'm going to trust God. This year, I'm going to trust man less. 
have discovered, and I'm sure some of you have discovered too, that several of the people you thought would help you have let you down. But there is a God who will never fail. And he will not fail you this year. You don't mind by telling you another story. After all, we meet only once a year. I went to my village, 1980-something. I've just become general overseer. And somebody met me there and said, ah, now you are general overseer. And uh, suppose you have something to do in this village. And some big people decide to follow you here. You don't even have a house where you can put them. My father's old house <laughs> was all that was still there. And you need to see the old house. He said, I will help you. I will help you to build a house. I said, how? He said, I, I make blocks. I give you the blocks, all the blocks you need to build the house. Well, if all the blocks are gone, the rest is easy. And he said, you can pay me any time. Any time you are able. Oh, thank you very much. I, I thought this must be God. When somebody offers you help, I think you better check from God, whether it's from him. So I built the house. The very day I roofed the house, he sent to me and said, where's my money? Ah. You said I will pay where? <laughs> I, I, all I did was just roof. We haven't even put doors or windows. I remember that day I put my head on the table at the campground there. Deep down within me, I felt a deep sorrow. And I said to God, God, you know, I've, I've never done anything that I can't handle. It was this man who lured me into this. Well, please have mercy on me. Because the way he was talking to me now, he has found a debtor that uh, needed to be put to shame. I put my head on the table and I fell asleep because I had prayed all night before the message came. When I woke up, there was a man standing there who said he came all the way from the north. God told him that when you get to a certain place at the expressway, I will show you where to get down, cross over, and ask for the head of that organization. The man came and said, I'm looking for the head of this organization. I said, it's in heaven. He said, I'm looking for the earthly representative. I said, well, I am here. He said, God said I should give you this envelope. And then he gave me the envelope. I, I don't know why. I prayed for him. He left. And usually when they give me an envelope, I don't open it in their presence. So they won't know whether I'm surprised or disappointed. After he left, I opened the envelope. It was the exact amount that I was owing. There is a God who is the ever-present help in time of trouble. This year is going to help someone. But you must trust him more and trust human beings less. By resolution number six, is that I'm going to walk more closely with God than ever before. You see, the Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 8, John, James 4, verse 8, he said, You draw near to God, He will draw near to you. When you draw near to God, He will draw near to you. There are many of us who in the year past have gone to visit God maybe about two or three times in the year. We visit him at Christmas, visit him at New Year Eve, or maybe New Year Day. And some of us <laughs> have seen people who go, who go to church only on New Year Eve. They came from the bar, rushing before 12 midnight. And... Uh, <laughs> Like one friend said, they pray all manners of prayer on that night, and every day when they wake up, they say, God, remember what I said on the first day? Just make sure you bring all those to pass. And there are some of us who are Sunday, Sunday Christians. We go to church only on Sunday. 
But the Almighty God wants you to be near Him. He wants you to be close to Him. He wants you to draw near Him day by day. This year, like never before, I'm going to draw near to God. Because I have discovered from my own experience that there are problems that your effort might help you to solve in a year, two years, ten years. But if you draw near to God, you can solve that problem in five minutes. I'm believing God for you this year that even those problems that you have been struggling to solve all these years will have a solution even before the end of this month. Yeah. I'll tell you only one more story and then I will close. Some of you have heard the story before. I was preparing for my PhD at the University of Lagos. PhD in mathematics means you must solve a problem nobody has solved before. Now because it is a problem nobody has solved before, nobody knows whether it has a solution. And they don't give you a PhD for trying. You get a PhD for succeeding. So I began out the problem, began to work out the details, and at a stage I ended up with 186 simultaneous equations. Now those of you who know anything about mathematics at all, you know that two simultaneous equations are enough to give you headache. Now I had 186. And it got to a stage where I didn't even know what to do. Now, I've been working on it for 18 months. I didn't know what to do now. Do I stop at this stage and go and pick another problem, which I don't even know whether that one also will have a solution? And I can still remember that night like today. I had been studying till around 10 p.m., I didn't know what to do next. I just said, well, I'm going to sleep. I put aside mathematics. Let me study the Bible before I go to bed. And I decided to study Exodus 14, verse 21 to 28, the crossing of the Red Sea. And suddenly God spoke to me. And now I'm praying one more time. Every one of you here tonight with any problem whatsoever, God will speak to you this year. Yeah. As a son, go and bring your problems. He said, what you have just read is the solution to your problem. How can that be the solution to my problem? He said, bring your equations. And I brought them. And he began to guide me step by step. Put this one on the right, put this one on the left, this one on the right, this one on the left. I finished doing that, and suddenly I saw something I had not seen before. All the ones on the right had something in common. All the ones on the left had something in common. And the Lord spoke to me and said, sort the one on the left together, the one on the right together, and bring the two together. He said, that's what happened at the Red Sea. The sea parted into two. The children of Israel moved through on dry ground, and then the sea came back together again. In five hours, I finished the work I had been doing for 18 years. That's why when I submitted my thesis, the external examiner looked at it and said, I have no questions to ask. Because the solution didn't come from me. Which of course explained that when God now finally said, I want you to throw aside your PhD and come and serve me as a pastor. It was easy. Because it wasn't me who solved the problem to start with. It was the one who solved the problem. I have good news for someone here today. That problem might be marital. 
That problem might be financial. That problem might have to do with your career. In the name that's above every other name, as you draw near to God, he will give you a solution in Jesus' name. Which brings me to the conclusion. If I'm going to worship him more, if I'm going to tell him all my problems in details without hiding anything from him, if I'm going to seek help when I need help, if I'm going to trust him more and trust men less, if I'm going to draw near to God so that he can draw near to me, it follows. That according to Amos chapter 3 verse 3, two people cannot work together except they be agreed. It means this year I'm going to make up my mind that anything that will annoy God, I will not do it. I'm willing to pray that this day will mark a real turning point for the better in your life. Shall we please bow our heads? And if there's anyone here at all who will say, Pastor, please pray for me. I've made up my mind now that I will walk with God. I've made up my mind that I will surrender my life to Jesus Christ. Please pray for my salvation. If there's anyone like that, will you please raise your hand all over the place? God bless you. God bless you. Could you just keep the hand up for a while? Just another 30 seconds and I will be willing to pray for your salvation. Yes, I can see so many of you tonight. I know this is going to be a new beginning for you. It won't be just a beginning of a new year. It will be a new beginning for your entire life. Thank you, Father. Now, those of you who lifted your hands, please talk to Jesus Christ for just about one minute. Ask him to be merciful unto you. Ask him to forgive all your sins. Ask him to save your soul. Ask him to become your Lord. Ask him to become your Savior. Talk to him for just another one minute. And the rest of us who are already sure of our salvation, will you please intercede on behalf of all these people who lifted their hands for salvation tonight? And ask that the Almighty God will save their souls, that He will give them a brand new beginning, that this day will mark a turning point for the better in all their lives. Let us pray now. Father Almighty, I want to bless your holy name. I want to thank you for your word, and I want to thank you for all these people who have decided that they will surrender their lives to you at this moment. Father, you promise that whosoever will come unto you, you will know wise cast out. These people have decided to come to you now. Please receive them in Jesus' name. I'm asking, Lord God Almighty, that your blood that cleanses from all sins will wipe away all their sins tonight in Jesus' name. That will save their souls and write their names in the book of life. And that from this moment onward, any time they call on you, you will answer them by fire in Jesus' name. Thank you, my Father and my God. Now, my Lord and my Savior, I'm praying for all those who are here tonight. In a moment, I'm going to ask them to pray. Please, Lord God Almighty, as they open up to you tonight, as they cry unto you for help, as they cease to pretend and they tell you their innermost problems, I pray that you will answer them immediately in Jesus' name. I pray that before they leave this place, the answer to their prayers will have come in Jesus' name. Lord God Almighty, I'm praying for everyone here today. And all those who are listening to us, Lord God Almighty, by television or radio, that this year will be an extremely successful year in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that your presence will be with your people that they will find favor with you and find favor with men. That all who have been struggling, all those who have been laboring, will now begin to enjoy divine favor. And I pray, Lord God Almighty, that long before the end of this year, the mouths of your children will be filled with laughter in Jesus' name. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. You're watching Redemption Wave.